Hello and welcome back to the WatchGoku YouTube channel and another instalment of Time to Unwind. So this week it's a Torbjorn special, so it might be Torbjorn to Unwind or Time to Torbjorn or something Good. like that. But, yeah, um, they work. Yeah, so let's roll that intro. Cheers. Okay, so today me and Ben kind of wanted to go through the Gakota Torbion. Um, as some of you know, a few months ago we did release a limited edition Torbion, um, and we do have plans for it in the future as well. So we just kind of wanted to talk um, about, you know, the whole general Torbion project. So I suppose we should probably start with the fact that, um, you know, a Torbion for us, for a brand like ours anyway, is quite unheard of. So I don't know whether you wanted to go over sort of, you know, the initial ideas um, and where the design kind of came story, from. Yeah. yeah, so basically, as I'm sure that you're all well aware, you know, a Torbion stereotypically is a very expensive, you know, hand-finished piece from an expensive brand. Mm -hmm. And at the kind of price range that this was at, like £1,500, is kind of unheard of. But um, essentially, the Chinese have been dabbling in Torbjorn watchmaking for the last few years and, you know, becoming more and more stable in their production with some Chinese brands such as Memorigin. We approached it with, you know, some skepticism of will this actually work is it reliable and stuff but through mm. quite a lot of testing it did actually prove to be a really good movement and you know it it wouldn't rival a ten thousand pound torbjorn or something but it mm. really is a good value proposition at what it is yeah um and just from the fact that we felt that it was quite interesting and that we know that people like our customers who are really big into watches would really appreciate that so that was the start of the the project really was mm -hmm. finding the movement and then thinking you know there's a lot of potential here we could do something with this. So the design of the pieces as well, I know the, the first one released was obviously the black dial and we've yeah. got the one coming out with the silver. Um, they are slightly different but there are there's obviously a classical inspiration there so I don't know what they wanted to go into kind of you know the overall inspiration, inspiration for the design it, side yeah. of things. So being a British company I quite looked into kind of like classic British pieces so obviously a traditional tourbillon you might think of like a breguet or something like that where mm. it's very drawn from pocket watches and things like that so we've you know used similar design language in the decorated dials the roman numerals you know the kind of s silvered pieces on the mm -hmm. dial and then the kind of you know like the quite simple cases um mm -hmm. and kind of smaller size you know it's not something that's too flashy even though it is quite loud in being a tourbillon yeah it's it's very classical. So, yeah, slightly understated for what a Torbjorn is and mm. just very classically inspired. So, you know, you've got the curved breguet hands. Yeah, and as I said, the Roman numerals, the decorated dials, kind of reinventing that old guilloché style. Mm. And then you've got the enamelling on the crown and just all the little details all, all mixing together to make quite a classical style piece. But then it is also quite unique with... So this movement, it uses a, a big flying Torbjorn carriage. And because it's quite big, the hands are slightly offset mm -hmm. towards the top of the dial. So it allows the, the dial opening for the hours and the minutes to be slightly offset upwards, which allows us to play with the design. So yeah, the, should we go through the specs a little bit as well? Yeah, sure. So we talked about the effects of Chinese tourbillon. Um, yeah. So the case size, thickness, that sort of thing. Yeah, so the, the Chinese tourbillon itself is a 33mm wide tourbillon movement. So it is a, a big movement and it allows us to feel like the entire case back mm. or fill the entire case um, of the watch you know just like how before in the good old days you know before like mass produced movements if you had a watch the movement would be designed to perfectly fit in with that watch mm. and we've kind of taken the re reverse approach to this where we've perfectly fit the case around the movement yeah. so you know we'll, we'll bring up some pictures to show you but you'll see what I mean where the movement isn't or doesn't appear too small for the case mm -hmm. so it, it fills the entire case back um, it's very deliberate of how big we made the dial so that the tourbillon fit in the dial with the seconds track. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to keep it quite small because the Chinese tourbillon, because they're quite thick, mm -hmm. the movement is around 7 mil. So it's, it's a 40 mil diameter. Yeah. Um, and a 49.5 mil lug to lug. Mm -hmm. So we slightly elongated the lugs to make it wear slightly bigger yeah. than a 40 mil, but it still has that. 40 mil appearance. And you've obviously got the vertical brushing on the side of the case as well. So Yeah, exactly. So yeah, the brushing on the side of the case made it a bit more subdued than just polishing. Because yeah. if it was just polished down that entire like slab of the case side, mm -hmm. it might be a bit too loud, a bit too bright. And you know, when you compare it to the, the polishing on the top of the lugs, it really brings your attention in yeah. to the top of the watch, which 
slightly helps to mask the thickness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so the first one we did, which I'm wearing now, is obviously the black dial. So yeah. and that's the Gillesche dial. Yeah, so that's got a stamped wave style gear shape pattern. Mm -hmm. So it's almost reminiscent of like a sunburst effect yeah. where, you know, it catches the light and is very dynamic mm. in the light. Um, and then it's also the most contrasted of the two versions that we've unveiled so far, which in the fact that like you've got the silver hour and minute plates and the different applied plaques above the, the black. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously, you know, very highly contrasted. And this one is the more, I'd say like gothic yeah, of no, the two. Yeah. Um, but the black ties in nicely with the strap and the black enameling that's on the um, on the crown. And yeah. For this version, we use gold hands, which really tie in nicely with the balance wheel. Yeah, it ties it all in nicely. Yeah. Um, and the one you're wearing is obviously yep. the new so one. So this is the new silver dialed one, which hasn't actually been officially announced, but we've had it on the oh, website yeah. for a little while. So if people did pay attention to the watches section, they will have seen that. So essentially, uh, this is a more classically styled one you know heading more towards like the breguet style with the yeah. heat blued hands above the the silver guilloche dial so we've got the hobnail slash clouds de paris pattern in the middle and then like a grained texture on the yeah. outside which you know people will be able to see from the pictures and the the heat blued hands really tie in with the blued screws yeah okay so we should probably we've mentioned it briefly actually but the the profile price of the watch um yeah so obviously a tourbillon most people would expect it to be tens of thousands so kind of want to break down maybe how we're able to offer it um, at the price we are so yeah well of course you know with the fact that the movement is made in china it is definitely not as expensive as a swiss movement you know there's no kind of in superiority to it it's not unreliable or anything mm. like that you know we've tested it but when you compare it to the swiss one which may have been you know individually hand finished and things like that that's how the costs add up you know swiss labor and everything with the currency being very expensive yeah um but with the chinese movement it's more machine finished mm -hmm. slightly more raw but you know, when it's almost a tenth of the price of what Swiss talk would be, yeah. that's the trade-off that you make. But mm. honestly, for what it is, you know, the machining is, is very good. It does look really nice. And for the price, it is still a, v a really good value proposition. You know? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I think we, as a company, we know ourselves with watches. If we yeah. weren't happy with any any part of the movement, we, we wouldn't have used it. And Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, talking about something else now. Personally, so. I'm really into other like big independent brands and hand finishing and things like that. And I understand the importance of, you know, the, the whole quality aspect of mm -hmm. it. But I, I can genuinely say that I think this watch is a really, really good offering at, yeah. at 1499. Yeah, I think it's impressive. Yeah. So we've hinted at the new silver dial. Um, is there any updates on that? Is the best thing to do? Is pretty much just to stay tuned. Yeah, to so you will see, we'll show maybe a clip of the... Um, the listing on the Watch Gecko page, but there is actually a place where you can sign up to be notified when it comes in stock. Yeah. So the last one was more of a secret release. We um, unveiled it to certain customers who were signed up to the newsletter and stuff before yeah. telling or making the listing public yeah. to, to the general public. Um, so I would suggest if you are really interested, you should join the mailing list and Definitely. maybe yeah keep up to date that way, as well as finding out when it's in stock. Okay, so the whole tourbillon side of things is relatively new for us, let alone, yeah. I suppose, this side of microbrand world. Have we got more plans? Yeah, definitely more plans. Um, because we are so engrossed in watches, you know, and we're so passionate, we really like doing these little special projects. Yeah. So, you know, you can expect more from us, not just tourbillon related, but just little high-end projects or, you know... Can't say anything yet. <laughs> yeah, can't, can't say anything <laughs> Sorry yet. To say. Um, yeah. But you can definitely expect more from the tourbillon field yeah. and, and from other nice special things that we will hopefully unveil soon yeah stay tuned <laughs> stay tuned yeah and so some of you might remember in the past we have actually done an unboxing and hands-on of the first out tourbillon that we released yep. so we'll leave a link for that if you want to find out more about that first tourbillon if you missed it um, mm -hmm. and we will definitely do more videos in the future with the, the new releases so okay so thank you for watching me and Ben kind of go over the Kokota tourbillon I think as we mentioned before this is quite an exciting new side of the company for us yeah um, and it's something we're all pretty passionate about and you know getting involved in um, so if you're the same and you do enjoy it please let us know with a like on the video um, and like we mentioned if you do want to say subscribed um, for the tourbillon updates if you go on the website again in the description um, that's the best way to stay updated really so yeah definitely and let us know what you thought in the comments below as well you know if you like the watch if you have any suggestions yeah or, or any comments about it we'd love to hear it because it's you know it's quite an exciting release for us and we mm -hmm. definitely like to hear what what people think about it yeah um so yeah hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you next time see ya hello and welcome
Welcome back to Time to Unwind. Toby on Talk today. Let's get into it. Roll that intro, baby. I mimed it perfectly as well. <laughs> that was good, like that.